All right, good afternoon. It's about time now. Good afternoon. I guess uh, all of you are stuck at the home, home at the moment during this total or partial lockdown in the city of Flaming at this current pandemic situation. So by attending this matter seminar, it's definitely a good choice for you to kill your time. So today, I'm going to be presented on the uh, girder span bridge design, part one, the, en the engineering portions. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Chong Wilin, and uh, I am principal engineer of my own firm, Joe Trapping Down Scenario PLT. We're based in Kuching, Sarawak, east of Malaysia. I have been in the industry about 16 years, mostly deal with the bridge engineering design. And below can see those projects that have been involved recently. First one, the Patam Tatao Balance Can Deliver Bridge, total span of 486 meters long. Some firewall yards, trumpet exchange, 85 meters long, semi in the bridges. And uh, a year ago, I've been involved in IC, the independent checking engineer for the AC in Singapore, on two bridges as well, the Yishun Avenue, and also the other one is Congo Central West Bridge. So it's a great pleasure for me to uh, Madis Siebert uh, invite me to become speakers of the days. And uh, I really appreciate that. As we know, engineering life uh, is all about how to achieve efficiency and also the effectiveness. So nowadays, uh, engineers mostly rely on sophisticated computer software to perform the analytical computations by solving complicated metrics and converge thousands of the millions of iterations. In addition, there are also many structured software available in the market now, which is capable of carrying the structure analysis, but also equally capable of carrying on the engineering design function as well. And uh, it, in accordance to many design codes of practice worldwide. And Madison Device, as we know, is one of the leading players in the race. Girder span bridge is one of the most common structure bridge types can be found not only in Malaysia, but also globally, mainly because of its complexity, sorry, its simplicity, flexibility, and also practicality in terms of design as well as construction. In Malaysia, and particularly in Sarawak context, the girder span bridge are made of precast, pre stressed concrete girders, and also the reinforced concrete beams. These are the predominant type that are prepared by our local government agency, especially the public works departments or we call it JKR in local context. So let's get started now. So the part one will be on the engineering divided into three sub parts. The first sub part of 1.1 is on the overview design on the girder span bridge whereby we will discuss more on the general concept of the design, the bridge components, the deck cross-section elements, and so on, perhaps on the bridge articulations and some sharing of the real life example of photos. Second part of 1.2, we will be discussing how to facilitate the bridge modeling by using the PSC composite wizards that are valuable in the manuscript. And the final part of sub, sub part 1.3, we will discuss on the bridge traffic loading applications and some explanations in accordance to the relevant design code. So let's start on sub 1.1. Well, generally in Malaysia, particularly in Sarawak, the most popular bridge class is the JKR R5 standard class. It either comes in single or dual carriageway configurations. So this type of bridge has been adopted in state current mega infrastructure projects such as the Pangolin Highway, Second Tram Road, the Coastal Highway, and as well as the other state roads. So this bridge class will bear the same or compatible graphway constructions geometry with the ATJ R5 road stands as well. So let's talk about deck elements. Usually consists of the carriageway, marginal street, the footpath, the parapet, and also the utility slab. As you can see from this diagram below, 
The overall deck width will range from 12.4 meters or to 12.9 meters. The variations come in the footwear, footpath width from 1.25 meters to 1.5 meters. The length of the span is very much depends on the standards, precast girders, length depth, volume of the market. This comes in the standard length of 12 meters, 16 meters, 20 meters, 25, 30, 35, and also maximum 40 meters. The superstructure will consist of uh, RC beam for the short span bridge and PSE eye girders also for the 16 to 35 meters long. And uh, if we need to go up to 40 meters, we need to use the PSE T girders. Mostly the girders are simply supported sitting on the either elasto merit bearings or the mechanical bearing tight. Links that will be provided at the pier set at the top of the piers to uh, omit the extension joint over the piers so give the smooth ride to the road user. So these are the st standard PSD girder that's uh, commonly used in the market. For shorter span of 12 meters and below, normally RC beam is used with a dimension of 500 mm width and 1.2 meter depth in, in, in overall depth. So for span length from 16 meters to 35 meters, the PSC I girders is commonly being used with a depth range from 1.475 meters to 1.98 meters in depth. So we need to go further to up to 40 meters. We might need to use the super T girders with the uh, T flanges at the top and with a depth of 2.4 meters. Pre-stressed concrete grips are usually Grade 50s, but in some area where grade 50 cannot be achieved, minimum grade 45 is necessary. Girder spacing will vary depending on the overall deck width and also every designer preference, typically ranging from 1.5 meters to 2 meters. The topping concrete slab typically in between 180 millimeter sticks to 200 millimeter sticks, and uh, usually we adopt the same grade as the girders because. Uh, just to simplify the design and also much better durability. When we talk about PSC girders, we uh, cannot run away from precision. So these are precision data that uh, we need to discuss over here. So the common choice of the wire strands are uh, typically two groups. The first one will be smaller diameters, 12.9 millimeters diameters, and the bigger one will be 15.24 millimeter diameters. Both are made of super grade seven wires, log relaxations, and uh, stress relief strains. So these are the typical processing design assumptions that the designer used to make during the design. So in order to optimize the processing, des the processing design, we, uh, we usually specify 75% of checking stress. Modulus of elasticity stick to 195 gigapascal, 6 nm as drawing figures, Coefficient of friction we usually use from 0.2 to 0.25, and the overall factor also considered from 0.02 to 0.0033 per meters. So you look at the, uh, the, the, the right figures over here, actually show typical arrangements of how we uh, put in the strength commonly in the English. Next, we move on to the bridge substructure. The bridge substructure typically consists of two types. The one is the piers, in case you have multiple span bridge, and the abutments is, is a structure supporting the girders from both ends of the bridge. The pier will consist of a pier headstock, somebody called pier bands in other countries. And of course, you can run with pier columns and also power caps. The pier has top usually come in rectangular shaped with constant even uh, or in the tapered depth sections. Pier column also come in, sometimes we use single wall column or it can be multiple column in uh, circular or semicircular or reticular shape as well. And the uh, power cap is usually as rigid thick sections come in rectangular shape, square shape, hexagon or any other shapes that depending on the power arrangement. While the abutment's reinforcing abutment is a reinforced concrete structure with the steel beams, actually the power caps, the back wall, 
to retain its back soil, ring wall, curtain wall, and also the transition slab has been placed in order to get rid of any differential settlement behind the apartments. Mostly the uh, apartment types are spiritual type, which is bensic type with a stocky wall. And another, another one is a much uh, higher wall, which is called the candelable type. So these are the figures uh, of, or the example of the uh, uh, rich substructure components. Next, we move to some uh, interesting uh, real life photos that I've been involved in the recent years. The first one is the Batang Tatao approach span. As you can see, it's a typical pure headstock with a rectangular shaft and a constant depth, supported by twin semi circular pure columns. You can see the diaphragms and also the girders. So, this is the another one example. This is the flyover viaduct in the city. We are using a single wall type columns with a tapered step of pure, the pure headstock and also the curtain wall. And this is the uh, completed single span bridge, 35 meters, fe featuring the uh, spiritual type of apartments you can see from here. So next, we uh, let's discuss on how can we facilitate the bridge modeling using the PSD composite bridge wizards, which is uh, available in the Maxibo. So to have a better illustrations of the process. Let's uh, take a case study of two span bridge, 30 meters and plus 30 meters multiple precious gutter span bridge as shown in the log over here. So this example of bridge will have the following features, which are very common to be found on a typical concrete bridge in, in, in Sarawak. So I can see the span configurations is 29.8 meters. 29.8 meters, the distance is being measured from substructure center lines, the abutment center line to the pier center line to be 29.8 meters. As far as the bridge articulation is concerned, the longitudinal translational movement, which is running parallel to the bridge shape directions, this direction, is to be provided only restraints and pier, while it has been set free in the both apartments. So this type of arrangement actually has an advantage to minimize the forces induced by the grip and shrinkages into the apartment foundations, which is not necessary. So if we don't develop any restraint at the both, both apartments and let the girders to contract theory towards the center line of the piers, so there will be minimal lateral forces being uh, transferred to the apartments. So this is actually uh, a very good uh, risk articulation. So the other elements that we're talking about is the carriage wheel width. It's total nine meters, consists of two numbers of trip and climbing trip in length. And also remember to add in the marginal strip of one meter and both side, on both side of the carriage wheel. There are two numbers of footpath, 1.25 meters each of them. And the uh, superstructure will be supported by the seven numbers of type 30 G PSC girders, measuring 1.83 meters in depth, and to be spaced as 1.84 meters center to center. This made up the overtake width is 12.4 meters, and the pure column height was just for the insert, we, we take five meters. So then let's look at this uh, elevation developments. Elevation of piers and the sectional and pier center lines. Try to remember all these figures because we're going to use these figures to input the field in the composite wizard later on. 1.84 meters center to center, 12.4 meters overall deck width, 5 meters tall pier columns, 7 meters apart of them. And the gaps between the end phase of the girders to be 200, you can see from here, 100 mm from the face of the girders to the center line of the piers. And the pier column to be 2.5 mm. Next, we just 
move straight to the composite wizards. So when you open up the processing uh, PSC composite wizards, typically this uh, this uh, design form will pop up, consists of five tabs, layout sections, tenants, loads, and construction stages. So first of all, we look at the layout. So we need to tell layout is actually for us to input or define the geometrical dimension of the bridge. So first we need to choose the uh, precast builder type and we input the span information as two numbers of 30.1 meters span information. Now why we added 100 mm at to the 30 meters? Because this is to define the distance from the girder and face to the pier center line, which is equal to 30 plus 0 from 1 meters, become 30 from 1 meters. So next we uh, define the uh, deck width 12.4 meters, you can see. Spacing A and spacing B. Oh, now what is spacing A? Spacing A is actually the uh, gap between the girders and face on top of the piers, which is 200 mm in our case. Spacing B is actually the girder and face to the bearing center line. So in this case, it's 3 mm. So next, we need to define the uh, articulation of the bridge that I mentioned before. So we set three departments. So we just input a zero to denote the free in the uh, free movement in the global x directions. And as for the peer, we need to define the artificial figures or, or very large figures, which is equal to 1 million over here. We did not fix it in terms of the movement. So next we define the elastic link length, which is representing the bearing thickness, the plane thickness, and also the girders for the plate. I'll explain how to get these figures later on. So next we uh, just define the fixity, the peer support as a fixed or subsidy, and we define peers. Peer height be five meters, the spacing the part is seven meters from the uh, for the between the peers column. Yeah. So after we finish defining the layout, we move to uh, sections. Section is where we define the uh, section properties for each of the uh, bridge components. First of all, we tell the tell the software the thickness to be 0 0.2 meters. And before we can use this uh, composite wizard, we need to define uh, the materials. Uh, and the C50, sorry. But, 50 concrete has been predefined before we execute the visit, so we just assign them correctly to each of the components, to the deck, to the girders, and to the deck frames. Next, we need to define the girders. There are seven numbers of girders and uh, space at 1.4 meters center to center. So we need to define the girder offset correctly over here. This field. Next, we go to define this, the deck frame. So we click on the advanced tab here and can tell you input which type of uh, deck frame that you you need to, to model. And in our case, we don't have any intermediate diaphragm. We only have ends diaphragms, one in departments and also in peers. So we just take the relevant end support and peer support. And also we have to predefine the diaphragm sections. So we just assign it correctly. Next, we'll move on to define the girder sections. Now in post station girders, we usually have two different sections along the road line. The one is the Typical I section in the needles, and also the uh, the other one will be the end block section above end of the girders. So we need to define correctly in the well as well. So the first 2.5 meters in the and uh, the other side, 2.5 meters will be assigned to composite end block sections, which also have a predefined in, in the first place, and uh, left left the middle section to be composite I sections. So after we've done the section, we move on to tendons. Okay, so we are using a post tension with a parabola, parabolic profile. So over here we have to choose the curve types and choose appropriate tendon properties, assign the correct numbers of it, and define the uh, profile through the dimension of D, H1, and H2 to be uh, consistent with the drawing that we've been shown over here. And to, uh, I mentioned before that to, to, in order to optimize the precision design, we have to Stress it to 75% of the UTS, which is equal to approximately 1,400 MPS. And then, next step, I will show you how to define the uh, 10 properties over here. So, this is the, uh, the how we define the 10 properties. First, we choose the internal cross tensions. 
type of tenant. And also we define the numbers of strands. In our case, we have 19 numbers of 15.2 millimeters diameters. When you click in the number of strands, the total area will be automatically calculated by the software. It's equal to 2,660 millimeters square. And we need to tell the software what is the uh, duct diameters. The mother receiver define the uh, duct diameter as the outer diameter. So this is very important to remember. Next, we need to uh, define the creep models. Now we're talking about creep models. Mother receiver actually it does not build in the creep model as per BS5400 part four appendix C, which we usually adopt in. in in, in, the, in the practice, but uh, however, we can choose to adopt this CEB FIP 9090 version because this version will simulate the crib behavior and will produce the closer match to the figures that are produced by appendix C in terms of the total crib strength and also the coefficient. So, uh, in, as an alternative, we, we should choose the crib models of CEB FIP 1990 version. And then the rest of the field, we just uh, have to key in the relevant figures, the UTS, the coefficient factors, the vocal factors to draw in, and we select bond type because we, we, we're going to drop the uh, tenders right after processing. So uh, this is about tenders. So now we are looking at the loading tab. So when we're looking at the loading tab, which is uh, where we define the prominent loading components to the structure, now first, we have to define the uh, depth cross sections elements whereby the minor receiver will allow us to define through dimension V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. So V1 and V5 is used to denote the concrete carpet dimensions. The V3 will denote the medians for dual pressure wave. Width. And uh, V4 and V2 and V4, sorry, is for to define the carriage wave. Well, this default setting is not quite consistent of uh, our case study today because it cannot define the uh, foot path, as you can see. Yeah. And also, we don't have the median. So, so we have to more manually add in the foot path and the, uh, the curve weight after we, generate the, after we generate the model by using uh, another separate load cases. You can just go in SDL manually afterward, we have to do it. And at the same time, we have to make sure that the submissions of V1 to V5 will equals to the overall deck width. In our case, we talk about four meters. Otherwise, the um, the error message will pops up saying that you know the summation of V1 to V5 will not equals equals to the overall deck width that we defined previously. So by doing so, we have to include the footpath width in our case into the V2 and V4 dimension. So it make up to be 5.75 meters for V2 and, and V4. So as we do define the way the loading to be distributed throughout the construction stage, typically we have to adopt the first one, separate to be distributed equally only during the non-composite stage. Whereby after the topping of the slab is hardened and so as the composite action kicks in, we just let the loading to be distributed across according to each girder stiffness. So we untick the rates, we only tick the first one before composite. So meanwhile, we have to define the, the loading the dead weight to take before and after composite as well. So firstly, we define the concrete density and that uh, slab thickness for the wet concrete during the non-composite. And after the composite action kicks in, we define the super and post dead load for the uh, carpet as well as the wearing surfaces again. So by default, the wearing surface width will be applied throughout the uh, dimension of V2 and V4 area. And again, it's not quite right in our case. So just we, we just need to trim it, trim it down manually afterwards to be within the path curve later on. So after the generation of the model, Again, uh, over here, uh, usually we did not we did not consider the utilities uh, in, 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 in the wizard because uh, 
simply because the, the software only allow us to input the utility on single side of the bridge, whereby we, in our case, we normally apply it at the both sides. So furthermore, the location of P1s cannot be specified outside the that width as a cantilever. So whereby our utility set is actually located outside the bridge. So uh, in this particular case, I just choose to uh, input the utility loading manually afterwards. So I just choose to check, to check off this utility step. So the last step will be on the construction stage. So by default, the, these are the values and durations and that are being created by MetaSQL. And uh, we can actually alter the duration, the member ages after the generation of model. So we check off the reinforcement as the re analysis will be based on the cross section instead of transform section. So uh, design of the members are to be done outside the MEDA server because uh, yeah, the, the MEDA server has not incorporated PS5400 part 4 into the design module. But the good news is I think the MEDA server has, has planned to incorporate uh, PS5400 into the design options. And in fact, that move has been conceived quite some time ago. So I think let's hope we make our life much easier in the future so we can design the, within the medicine. So after you're done all, remember to send it to template file and so that it can be recalled to modify or generate new models in the future. So after you click to execute, then here we go. The uh, Within seconds, the uh, 3D model will be created after you press the uh, button. But like I said, nothing is perfect because uh, before you arrive to this stage, you still need to do some kind of minor modification to the models. Like being highlighted in here, one, two, and three. The first one will be the end diagram. Second one will be the power caps. And the third one will be on the uh, length slide portion. I will explain one by one. Let's go to the first one. So first of all, we need to, after the generation of the model, the, uh, and by default, the end that frame will be assigned to the uh, very edge of the village, which is not in our case. In our case, our diaphragm will be coincide to the center line of the bearing. So we need to move the members from the diaphragms to, to be located 300 mm from the edge of the village. So by simply doing that, we have to go to the knot and menu elements and uh, trans choose translate and move and move it to the correct places. And the second, we need to um, add in the pocket members as well. By default, the wizard will only model up to the peer columns with the spots has been assigned at the bottom of the columns. So in our case, we have to combine pocket. So we need to add in the pocket. And after you have added in the new members of the pockets, then we need to connect it to the peer column that has been uh, defined previously by using a master and slave widget links. So after we've done that, we need to uh, add in the fixed support at the base of the pocket where you have to remove the two support has uh, been defined previously by the software. So that's on the pockets. So next we move on the peers. So if you look at the peer, the link step actually is uh, connecting the span one and the span two. So the actual thickness of the length set will be 20 mm thinner compared to the length set over here, which is 0.18 meters. So we need to change the link slab, link slab thickness to 0.18 meters. The link slab is separated by 20 mm or standard polystyrene filler. Just uh, it, it just to act to the bond between the, the, the slab and the diaphragm because uh, this is to simulate the, sim the pure simply support effect. So with the bonding in place, the girders can rotate freely. So no negative bending moments will be developed within the link slab. So this is elastic link height that I mentioned earlier on how do we get to 125 mm. The, in our case, the top plate thickness is 32 mm. The bearing thickness is 75 mm. Motor plate is 35 mm and the resistor is 20 mm. So it's add up to be 125 mm. So we define the uh, elastic link, which is representing the bearing, yeah, basically, to be 125 mm. So yeah, how do we define the fixity to the bearings? 
like I mentioned before, we have to use a very large number. Uh, sorry, we have to use a very large value, say it's uh, one million. It used to simulate the fixed or rigid conditions, while the now value is being simulate free and sliding conditions. So uh, it's very clear over here. So now, apart from the geometrical modification, we still need to do some minor tweak on the composite section as well. Because by default, the now value has been uh, assigned to both the element one, which is the girders, and also the element two, which is the topping slab. The edge in forms of the days shall be input in both elements, all the analysis will be brought. So typically seven days is to be assigned to the girders, and three days is to be assigned to the topping slab. Now this edge in days is in fact represent the edge of the concrete structure before it starts to receive any external loading. So these factors play a very vital role in the, in the calculation of the creep strength of the concrete, especially for the Christmas structure. So now let's we move on to the next. On how do we use the Christmas composite group from an existing water farm? So how do we re reuse the composite visit farm to create another village model in the fastest possible way? So all engineers are emphasized on the effectiveness and efficiency in producing the quality design works so well. There are two ways. First, we uh, modify it from the existing village model, whereby it, it has been tested and proven to work gloriously. Um, well, second way is just start, start from scratch, open a new farm. So if you choose to modify from an existing model, well, first you have to delete all the nodes, the frame elements and plate elements is this uh, being created in the existing model farm. Then you have to delete all the groups, structure, boundary, loads, and standard groups. And you delete the first five uh, static lot cases in the CS stage, which is safe weight, weight concrete, barrier, bearing surface, and pre stress. Then you have also have to delete all the boundary conditions defined, support, elastic link, rigid link, everything. Then delete all the construction stages, all the composite section, and you have to delete last but not least the dummy section and, and the material sections. So uh, after you've done so, you can just load the precious income file again and open up the wizard file. For example, in our case, we will be to span 30 to 30 wizards and you modify the items within the wizard file to, to, to suit your new bridge modeling. Or you can choose to start from scratch, just opening a, a, a new file, a new fresh file, and then you start to import the section properties or, and the material properties and the loading combination cases from an existing model file into the new file, and then to do the same thing again. Now, the advantage of using the existing uh, model file and the wizard to create a new model is that you do not need to recreate the material and section property because you already predefined the first place. And the second thing, you do not need to recreate the loading combination case, which could be proven to very, very tedious and uh, so effort to create loading conditions. So in the terms you save time, save effort, and also it is mistake when you're starting from scratch. So I hope all you get it. Now we move on to the last portion, uh, which is the uh, bridge traffic loading explanation and applications. So currently there are only few Southeast Asian countries, including Brunei, Singapore, well, previously, and Malaysia, of course, are practicing British standard as a primary design standard for bridges. So, however, Singapore is the first one to fully migrate to, to the Euro court since, um, I think, 2014. So, as for Malaysia, the intention of the migrations and the preparation of the relevant national annex to the Euro court had been concerned since many years back as well, but until now, we're still not ready to fully migrate into the Eurocon nationwide, especially EC2 for the British design. Hence, uh, we are still very much depending on the British standards, which is the BS5400 for the British design and the BD3701. We have the BS5400 part two as East Appendix A for traffic loading definitions. So, apart from that, Malaysia also practice the JK Malaysia specific bridge life boats for the bridge, which uh, does the bridge line along the certain routes, especially the federal routes, 
which is involving the LTAL long term extra load policies, and also the SB20 units, which came up to 450 tons. But this is not a common case now. Since this is not common and practiced beyond Malaysia, so it will not be covered in our topic today. So the uh, standard and design criteria that we have been picked uh, to be covered by today is actually, like I mentioned before, the UK Department of Transport AD3701 lots for highway bridges, the JKR specification for fish net lot, which is not covered by today. And the traffic loading criteria we made out of uh, HA loading alone. It can be a combination between the HA and HB loading. The HP could be guided on the center line of the carriageway or could be guide, unguided on the carriageway, depending on the uh, agency policy. And the JKR life load consists of LTAL loadings and a special vehicle SP20, which is not to be discussed over here because uh, it's not applicable to other countries in Malaysia. And we talk about the design criteria. So the design criteria is actually depending on the uh, Loading combination type, the uh, limit state design, and also the uh, class that we are looking at, the design requirement, and also the uh, combination of the light bulb. For, take for example, if we're looking at a precessing structure, uh, 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 in our case, the, the 30 G girders, so we may be looking at the loading combination type once and at the serviceability limit states. We have to design the girders to meet the class one requirement as been required by the BS5400 part four, whereby the decompression limit has to be decompression requirement has to be met, which is uh, no tensions to be developed along the section of the precess girders. And the loading to be considered either hash air launch or the combination between the hash air and the hash air 30 units. So the similar criteria, as you can see, is applied to the uh, type two to five combinations, and the design will be based on the class two and three, where it allowed it allowed to take tension, but within the allowable tension of concrete, and the loading to be considered as HA, HA plus HB45 as well, and the same thing applies to the, the other type of the combination and also the other type of structure as well. Uh, due to a time constraint, I got, I'm not going to explain one by one because you can uh, study within this table. Now we move on to how do we define the correct way and the notion length to the BD37. Take for instance, in our cases, uh, the correct way width actually the width between the race curves. Our case will be 9 meters from the foot path curve to the foot path curve, the other side. So 9 meters. And uh, according to the BD37, we fall into this group. Above same, the crash wave width lies between the segment from 5 meters and 10.95 meters. The number of notional land that we should consider is three numbers. So the uh, each notional land will be three meters individually. So now let's look how can we use the uh, minus steeper to apply those uh, traffic light loads. First of all, we need to define the length. For example, we need to in, uh, Define the, the first land, we call it land one, and then the land width is three meters, eccentricity is driven two meters from the reference line that we set, and the wheel spacing is actually one meter. Consider for the pedestrian, we need to define the land for the pedestrian as well. Look at it, we define 1.25 meters for the land width, and this is the position representing the eccentricity. The wheel, sp wheel spacing we set to 0 4, 5, 6. Actually, what is the wheel spacing? The wheel spacing actually is the uh, the distance between the uh, the point the wheel lock in one single axle cross. So by default, minus set four wheels within one notional length. So we just need to define equally the wheel spacing between the four wheels. So in this case, 1.25 divided by Three, not four actually, three space because you have four wheels, so we have three spaces. So we go to zero point four five six. So in for example, the, the, the hash length is three meters, so we divided by three, we become one meter each. 
So after you define all the uh, traffic land, this this uh, you can always click choose to display the land as we define correctly. So the green dot actually represents the wheel road positions according to the, the wheel spacing that we specify. And the land name tag over here they actually representing the center line of the specified length. So we can check every time you have uh, defined the length. So make sure the length has been defined correctly. Next, we move on to how do we, how do we define the, uh, the vehicles? So first, we need to create the HA loading vehicle. We, we choose standard HA loading. And when HA defined, the minus will automatically adopt a different loaded length with a different loading intensity. So you, you also apply the land permutations and also the loading pattern to produce more uh, severe loading effects on certain members that are currently under your interest. So something goes to the HN and HP auto. So the MIDAS table will automatically dot different HP configurations and also the HA plus HP loaded land permutations and also the loading pattern to produce the most critical loading effect to the structures. So you can choose an, how many numbers of units for the HP you are designing to. You can choose HP 30 units or HP 45 units. So next we define the pedestrian loading definition also. When pedestrian is defined, the minus table will also assign pedestrian loading in according to the appropriate loaded length and intensity to produce the, uh, the most critical effect to them to the structure as well. So remember, position loading is to be combined with hash and movie cases, and also to be combined with hash A and hash B movie cases. But it do not need to be combined with SP if you if I consider SP 20 in the design. So next, we move on how to be define the uh, movie cases, we call it. So we need to define the hash A movie cases, whereby the uh, hash A UDL plus the KL loading is, is involved. So remember, we have to untake the outdoor life foot combinations because uh, HA is not uh, available in the outdoor life foot combinations. So we have to untake it before we can able to select the suburb case to before we can uh, select the HA vehicle over here. So uh, we we create the suburb case and then we select it, the number of the length to be three numbers. In our case, is three three notional lengths. So we select the HA vehicle loads and we assign appropriately the land that we defined previously, land one, two, and three. And then so I click OK, then it will be defined. The HA UDL moving case will be defined. Next, we have to define the uh, HA plus HB45 outdoor cases. Now, in this case, we need to take the outdoor connection because, uh, because in order to use the HA and HB auto, uh, functions within the uh, neither civil. So once we take the the hash the auto life load combination, we can choose actually the one that moving load case to be to be created to the uh, uh, service service limit set or the automated limit set. And also we can choose which combination type that we we intended that moving case to be. We can choose combination one or combination two or three. So by doing so. By doing so, the software will automatically assign the HA and HB combination according to uh, one of these figures specified in the BD37. Either the HB will be lying wholly within one notional length, or it can be choose to straddling between two notional lengths as they have been shown in the figures here. So next, we need to define the pedestrian moving as well. So uh, same thing, we have to uh, choose the uh, vehicle type as pedestrian, and then we assign the, uh, the uh, pedestrian lane accordingly. Now next, this is a table showing the, the load combination for traffic loads that we uh, use typically for our design. So usually we need to correct the hash A uh, as a uh, HA loading and the service delay limit stacks for the load combination type 1. So the loading component that involved will be HA UDL plus EKL, also to be combined with the pedestrians. 
So the loading factor is all S per the DD, DD 3701. So you, you can study the tables. I'm, I'm not going to explain one by one due to the time constraints. So uh, next we move on to the uh, how do we generate the loading combination by using the old generation functions, which is available in Metal Civil. So this is quite a new feature actually, because uh, because I, I believe the DS5400 loading combination type has been added to do the uh, software recently, I think last year. Previously, we are not able to do so. So we tried that how do we make use of this auto generation function to, to create the loading combination split seconds. So first of all, we choose the concrete and then we choose the appropriate design code, which is by 400 over here. Then you can choose the bridge type to be roadway in your cases. And then for in order to create the hash A loading combinations, because hash A is not the auto moving cases. So if we choose the hash A UVA, we have to choose the vehicle type for the software to apply the relevant partial load factors. So when, when we choose hash A UVA, the BS vehicle type will come up to be like this. And then you just click on the BS vehicle partial load factor tables, it appears like this. It's for you to choose which vehicle that you want the software to apply the relevant load factor, partial load factor to you on, into your moving cases. So for HA, for instance, we have to choose HA. So over here, we just choose HA alone. And then uh, by clicking X, in, afterward, we have to choose the partial lot factor for the inaccurate lot effect, which is uh, usually is known as uh, the gamma F3. So by default, the value has been set 1.1. 1 .1. So afterwards, you just click OK, and then the, uh, the, gen, the, the software will generate the lot combination involving hash A UVO for you. And while we need to define hash A and hash B auto, the same process goes on. And but this time, when you choose the hash A and hash B auto, then you are not able to choose the BS vehicle tag because the software will automatically apply the relevant hash lock factor into the hash A and hash B 45 auto cases. Same thing goes to the gamma F3. So these are the uh, ones you click, one you select the OK, and then uh, the, uh, the appearance will appear like this. The uh, loading combination you can see has been created for you for the URS combo type and the SMS combo type one. It's all here. So this, uh, I have to remind you, the user, is that the, when, when you look at, the, try to examine the lot factors of HAUDO, over here is shown 1.65, actually consists of uh, 1.5 times 1.1 for the Gamma F3. At, uh, it, well, this is for log combination type 1 is ultimately the state. So, but, but when you look at the HA and HB45 auto cases, it's only appear 1.1. 1 1. So what does it mean? It's because the, the factors of 1.3 for HB, Partial loading factor 1 per 3 for HN, HB dot, and ultimately with that, is only inherently created within the HA and HB 45 auto lot, which you already defined through the moving case earlier on. So it will not be repeated over here, otherwise, it will be double counting. So over here, we just show 1.1. 1. 1. Actually, the 1.3 1. 1. factors is already hidden within this dot case before. So this is the, uh, the things that we, uh, we, we need to know, this difference between the auto and the non-auto. So I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's still the end of the presentation by today. I don't know whether I have to overshoot the time, but just about the correct time. So it's still 10 minutes to go. Uh, it's open to Q&A session at the moment. So uh, if you have any question to ask me, then you can uh, Raise your hands and eh? type. I will try to answer as my my very best. <laughs>